Zach and I finally sat down. We were really in very different camps about what kind of a deal could go on. He's looking for a situation that he can control. Like this, you're not dictating the terms here. You know, you've dictated too much for too long. Tori and me as adults can't put ourselves in a situation like that. It's unhealthy. We go from seeing them almost daily, you know, to completely cut off. Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. It's Monday, May 9th. Welcome back to my channel. There's some more tea spilling out of the Roloff family. The new teaser just came out by TLC. Us Weekly dropped the exclusive and this one is hot and spicy and it's like a spicy chai latte spiked with whatever, fill in the blank. It's Serious. We go from seeing them almost daily, you know, to completely cut off. Like, you're not going to see the kids, we're not going to bring them to the farm, we're not going to talk to you. So, I so we've had a couple videos explaining that there's a fallout happening at Roloff Farms, and now we're getting some of the details, y'all, and it's intense. Before we get into those details, do me a favor and make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and double check to make sure you're subscribed if you're already subscribed. Some of you have been telling me that you've been unsubscribed by YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I mean, why wouldn't you? You won't regret it. Obviously, leave me some comments and tell me what your thoughts are on this video. So the new season of Little People Big World is coming out next week and in the new season, we're going to be dealing with the fallout after uh, Zach and Tori make an offer on the farm and Zach and his dad have an argument about it and then they eventually leads to the family cutting off, uh, Zach and Tori cutting off Karen and Matt. So earlier today, Us Weekly dropped a sneak peek and you, my goodness, if I've ever wondered if Karen is an instigator and a enabler, I'm convinced of it now. And I just want to say after watching this teaser, I am proud of Zach and Tori for uh, holding their boundaries because y'all, this is messy. So the clip starts out and it says that while production of the season had not started yet, Zach and Tori had made an offer on the farm to Matt and they offered to buy the, the north side of the farm and Matt would keep the south side. According to Zach, he made the offer and his dad did not accept the offer and he wanted to negotiate. Matt says that Zach came in with a demand he didn't want to negotiate and that after just a few moments, it kind of blew up and it got very tense and the negotiations fell apart. He's looking for a situation that he can control. Like this, you're not dictating the terms here. You know, you've dictated too much for too long. Zach came in real hot, you know. He didn't come in to negotiate, you know. He came in to um, demand. Tori and me as adults can't put ourselves in a toxic situation like that. It's unhealthy. Zach said, that he was tired of his dad controlling everything and that's how it's been for years and that he had made an offer and he just wanted to cut uh the control part of it out of the like the the toxicness out of it of his dad controlling everything matt kind of felt like you know it's my farm i have room to negotiate blah 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 well following this Karen then gets kind of snarky and says how in the Roloff family, when they fight, they hold grudges and they stay mad for years. But I don't know why they're so mad. It feels very personal. I mean, I, I'm riding the, the Roloff crazy train. <laughs> yeah, the Roloff crazy train. But in her family, they will argue and then five minutes later, they will be fine. And she 
says that it's like, uh, you know, she's like on this train with them and it's like, She's just being really degrading to the Roloffs and how they manage Crazy conflict. Trash. Jeez, I mean, I know I, my family isn't perfect either. You know, we might yell at each other, but then, you know, five minutes later, we're like, are you mad? <laughs> yeah. But this family's like, oh, we're mad. We're mad for years. Yeah. And Matt's like sitting there just like chuckling and hackling along with her about how ridiculous all of this is. Well, Tori and Zach, apparently, Karen says, completely cut them off and said, you're not going to see our kids. You're not going to see us. We're not going to come to the farm. We're done. And they cut off Karen and and uh, Matt after everything fell apart with the farm negotiations. Zach said that the relationship with his dad is extremely toxic. And after years of his toxic control of the family, he just couldn't do it anymore. And it wouldn't have been healthy for him and Tori to be part of a farm with his with their dad. It just wouldn't have been a good environment for any of them. And so he and Tori were putting up boundaries and doing things a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> It's awkward, yeah. Karen, again, is like mocking this and thinking it's ridiculous and whatever. But in the beginning of this teaser, they're going to the farm for the first time after this huge blow up. And they're going to let them know that they're moving to Washington. And they meet Karen and Matt at the farm with Jackson and Lila. And... While they're there, there's like no talking between them. Tori says it's totally awkward and she doesn't really want to be there. And uh, Zach and his dad are not really communicating or talking. And he Zach tells Jackson to, oh, and my, by the way, like as Tori's walking up with Lila, <laughs> Karen just beelines past Tori and goes straight to Jackson. I've had this sense for a long time that Tori and Karen don't get along very well. And I am like, um, it's very omnipresent that Karen is as much a part of the problem as Matt is when it comes to their dynamics. I think Karen just really amps up his narcissism or if he has narcissism, she just really fuels it. Like she, she gets them all like gear geeked up about like how the kids are so dumb and oh how dare they be like this and it's so dumb that they're mad you know and so J zach tells them tells jackson hey can you go up to grandpa or to karen or whoever and tell them that we're moving and he tells them where they're moving and so then jackson walks up to them and says hey we're moving to fill in the blank and Karen and Matt were like, they thought it was so stupid <laughs> that Zach and Tori had Jackson tell them that they were moving. Hey, do you want to like, tell, do you want to tell Cha Cha, do you want to tell Cha Cha and Grandpa that we're moving to Battleground? Wait, hold on. You know what? We are moving into Battleground. Well, they, they had Jackson, you know, be the one to tell us that they were moving. Um, oh, that's weird. <laughs> I mean, who the f does that? Like, they couldn't just tell them themselves. They had Jackson in the middle telling them that they were moving. And Karen's, like, going on and on and on, and Matt's laughing about it. So Tori and Zach kind of proved their point that Karen and Matt are toxic and they didn't want to be part of a toxic situation. And I just want to say something when the bulk of your children don't want to talk to you um, and it's you that they don't want to talk to, but they still have a relationship with their mom. I'm guessing that the common denominator in that is you. Now, in fairness, if Matt were making the severed choice and deciding like, hey, I don't want to have a relationship with them, it would be different, right? So if somebody has a family, like say Jill Dillard. Jill Dillard cut off her family. Well, didn't cut them off, but she had to put boundaries up because she didn't want to be around the toxicness of her family, right? So in Jill's case, her family would say she's the problem, right? 
But in, in Jill's case, she's saying, no, I'm removing myself from a situation. So it's not always the person's fault. But in Matt's case, it's the consistent pattern of the toxicness, the controlling aspect, the demeaning, the, you know, trying to dictate what everyone says and does, trying to monetize everything about their lives, uh, exploiting the kids by putting them on television. Um, and then even at the opportunity to allow his sons to buy the farm, he wants more money than his kids can pay. And he wants it to be a business transaction, not a you know arrangement between father and son. And I think that's where the problem is where it is with the kids like if your dad has been telling you for your whole life this is going to be our legacy many farmers who are in my comments a couple of videos ago were saying that a lot of times on family plant on family farms they will plat out uh the farm and they'll divide it into subsections if they're going to pass it down so say farmer joe has five kids and he has 500 acres i'm just giving you a very easy thing he divides the farm into five tracks or five plots of 100 acres and they each get 100 acres and it's a part of their inheritance and they can use it now or they can have it upon their death. But it's not a situation where the family pays for it, it's a part of the family legacy. So in most farms, that's how it's done from people I've talked to is they hand it down and it's not like a financial transaction between fathers and sons. So, and they said in some cases, they'll take the inheritance early and start working the farm or they'll start working on the farm and that's sort of a way to earn their property, right? Zach had been working on the farm for years. You would think by all the amount of times those kids have worked on that farm and helped with that farm, they would have had rights to that property if Matt was using it as a legacy, but Matt wanted to make money off of it. And Jacob now says that they're going to be selling the property. So I don't think that Matt ever wanted this to be a legacy. I think for Matt, the farm was a money grab. It was pumpkin season. It was this dream he had of creating. But when the family dynamics fall apart, not to mention the the farm has i think 100 total acres except it's not all used for farming and they're only using a small portion of that for actual pumpkins the rest of it is outbuildings and barns and attractions for their pumpkin season it's not the most well used 100 acres and then if you're going to have to divide that into different kids it's just not enough it's not enough land to subdivide. It's a 50 acre plot, say that he wanted to buy the 50 acres, that's barely enough for a workable farm. It's like a hobby farm. So economically speaking, they're buying property that might not even return on investment in terms of like, they'll have to spend a lot of money every year just to put the output because they're not making a lot of money in the crops that they're bringing in. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but farming is a hard business at this point in time to make money. That's why a lot of farmers have contracts with big companies. It's why a lot of farms have gone corporate. It's why a lot of farms rent out and use, like I live in a farming community, so I'll give you an example. In my farming community, there are farmers that are independent, and then there are also farmers that have contracts with different seed companies. And you'll know which, seed co which farms have seed company contracts because you'll see a sign on the side of the road and it might be a certain brand of corn. And it'll be like this corn and it's for this brand corn. So they have effectively leased out their land for this company to grow corn for this company. And then they, once the harvest is done, that corn is then automatically given to that company. It's, an, it's for many farmers, they do it this way because it, you're, you're guaranteed a buyer and you have a contract. And so you don't have to worry about the influx of like prices and um, the instability in the market. But it also is risky because crop damage, yields, if yields are down, that all goes against the amount of money that you get paid by the company. Other farmers, and I'll just give you another example, is uh, I have a farmer who does beef, okay? So my farmer that does beef, he has 
or my neighbor, well, he's kind of my neighbor. He's like across the road, but I've met them. They're very nice people. They do beef and they don't have a contract with anyone specific. They actually sell their beef um, on the side. Of, like they sell their beef through, like they have uh, a sign where you can buy beef from them. Uh, they use marketplace uh, things on Facebook. And then they also like sell it to butchers and stuff. And then they sell it to, to whoever, but they don't have a contract with say a beef company to be raising beef for them. So their cattle are their own cattle and they can do whatever they want with that cattle. Some people have like chicken farms, they raise chickens for, for Tyson. Some farmers raise their beef for Hormel. My neighbors who have the beef uh, farm, they just, they don't have a, like a relationship with Hormel. They just sell it themselves. So it's riskier that way because you have to make sure you find all the buyers, but it's um, also you don't have to deal with the company and the yields and um, the fines. And if you if one of them dies and it goes against your total amount, you get out. So long story short, the farms that are around me are enormous. There are hundreds, even thousands of acres. Um, there's, you know, that person's farm I was telling you about with the beef, he's got easily over a hundred cows at any one time. You've got, I've got pig farms near me. You know, when I think of farms, that's what I think of. So when I look at the roll off farms and you've got Zach saying, I'm going to buy it. You're basically saying, I'm going to buy a hobby farm. And those aren't super profitable. They're like more for fun. <laughs> and, and if you're going to buy something for fun, it's an investment, it's expensive. And if you have a dad that wants to make money off of it and you know it's gonna be a toxic environment to have to work with your dad, you have a right to say no. And farming isn't easy. I mean, farm life is hard. It's nine, it's, you know, four in the morning till 10 at night. And, and if a farmer, like my beef farmer <laughs> neighbor, he also has a job that's not in farming. So it's, people have to do more than just farming, even the ones that have bigger farms. So I actually think it's healthy Long story short, sorry, I'm totally ram rambling here. Um, I think it's totally healthy for Zach and Tori to set up a boundary. And I think it's ridiculous the way that Karen and Matt have responded. And I just want to say that like the farming that you see there is just to me, they've made it something bigger than it actually is. And so if Matt had really wanted to do legacy farming, he would have needed to have hundreds of acres, hundreds, not 100 acres. And he would have needed to have more than one crop. He would have needed to have animals. He would have needed to have other uh, sources of income coming in. Like a lot of the farms I live around, none of them do pumpkins. They are one, one well, actually, we, there is one farm like about a mile away that does pumpkins. That's the only one that does pumpkins near me. The rest of them, they some of them sell their produce off the side of the road. But to me, the farm is commercial. It's like for the show. And I don't know how else to say that. And I think now Matt just doesn't want to farm anymore and he wants to make money off of it and it wasn't really about a legacy. Maybe he had this idea that was going to be a legacy, but maybe the kids have realized that that's what it wasn't all about. So when you have most of your boys shutting you out and now it's just Jacob left at this point, something's going on. And uh, Amy has already kind of shown to us who Matt is. Is it any wonder that this is where we're at? I know that they'll probably get less icy as the season goes on but i just want to say that like i'm proud for zach and tori for holding their boundaries and they looked like the ones that were going to just go with the flow and do whatever they needed to do to stay on the show and now it looks like they are being like no i don't think so i'm done what are your thoughts about it tell me in the comments below bye guys